Sup nerds, I'm Tom. Let's talk about Untamed Feral Factions. So if you've ever played any game that's like Magic, you'll kind of understand what Untamed Feral Factions is. You have decks, uh, in this game you have th uh, nine different decks that you can choose from different factions, but you mix three of them together to make your deck, and then you basically duel against another person, playing out, uh, there's, I think it's items and uh, creatures or animals, items and animals, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna call them instants and uh, creatures probably sometime in this video because that's kind of what they are. The animals have health and attack, right? They have strength and toughness, you know. And then you can either swing at the other animals. So you actually choose your targets. So either I'm going to attack this other animal, or you say I'm going to attack my opponent's stronghold. And that's kind of the name of the game. You, each of these factions has one stronghold. I put it on the top here. And you take those three strongholds from the, the three different factions that you mix together, and you put them in a stack. You get to choose the, the, the order. And they actually have special abilities on them that you can trigger. Um, but they also have health. And whenever they get destroyed, whenever you destroy all three of them, that's how you win, right? If you destroy all three of your opponent's strongholds, you win the game. Whenever you destroy one, um, the other one, you know, is available. So you get to see what that special ability is now and that kind of thing. Um, so it's you should be very familiar with the overall concept of the game. And then I'll talk about the things that are different. Like one is the stronghold thing is a little bit different. I mean, kind of similar to attacking your life points in, in magic, right? But here you get to choose at least. So it's a little bit more like Hearthstone, I guess, in that way, right? It's not your opponent chooses blockers. So you don't just swing and your opponent chooses blockers and stuff. Um, you decide what you're going to attack when you go and do it. The other kind of unique thing in this game is that the way that you get your mana or your energy or whatever they call it, right, the resource that you use to pay cards mostly is actually other cards. Not like in Magic where you have lands or you don't have, you don't gain resources, right? There are, I mean, these tokens, none of these tokens are resource tokens. These are like strength tokens and damage tokens. Um, but you actually pitch cards from your hand over to an area over here that in every card, on the back of every card, has a symbol for the resource. So you... You still do kind of, you know, tap, I guess. I don't know if we're allowed to say tap or whatever, but you do exhaust them to use them. So you burn cards from your hand for resources, but also your discard pile is a big resource, you know, area as well. A lot of cards will say that you spend a little, the little paw symbol. I can't remember what it's called, but you spend cards from your discard pile. You actually burn them completely out of game in order to trigger other abilities. So those things are pretty cool, right? Those are the three main big differences, right? In between this and any other game that's like it, right? Deciding what thing I'm gonna hit, your strongholds or your animals is pretty cool. Deciding the order, because a lot of them have different abilities, like what, when they arrive, or when they go into the discard pile or whatever, you know? And there actually is a little bit of a discrepancy in the rules. I think this um, keyword thing here says, where is it? Last word. Triggers when the animal is placed into your support area, and in the rules it says triggered when the animal is destroyed. Because, I mean, there are times when you can actually burn cards from your hand to place them into your support area, right? To, okay, I guess that's what it's called, to spend them as support. Um, so there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. I mean, I would assume it would be, even thematically, I would assume the rules take precedence, right? It would be, you know, their last word is because they're dying, so that's the ability they get to trigger. And there's a couple other things in here they add in these uh, like mythic animals and epic supports and stuff. So there's a variant that you can play with that. They have these full art cards. That's pretty cool. And even the art in the cards in general is all really cool. It's all this animal stuff, you know, these warring factions of what we've got bunnies and tigers and pandas and rhinos and, and alligators, you know. They do have really cool art, you know, to make these and this world kind of come alive and these animals really look like they're they're fighting each other. And there are other variants in this box. There's a three player, it says two to three. So there's different three player variants and you can actually go above that if you have multiple sets, but I haven't played any of those. So maybe they're fine, but I'm always really hesitant to play those because any game that's like a duel, right? Probably isn't gonna be great with extra players, you know, where you have to, like um, Eternal Chronicles of Throne was the same thing. It's two to four players, you know, but it was this wonky thing of like, you're always attacking the player to your left and you're always defending the player to your right kind of thing. Like, so I don't wanna comment on it too much because I haven't actually tried it yet. But I, I think these types of games that are made to be a duel, when you start adding extra players, it's gonna have chaos. Even Star Realms is the same way, right? Like Star Realms is a great duel, but then when you add extra players and you can choose who you're gonna deal damage to and stuff, it just becomes real wonky. Um, but this game is actually really fun. It's really clever. Well, 
I don't want to say it's clever, actually. Because that's pro the biggest problem I have with this game, other than, I mean, well, the components are, these tokens are okay. I think this is a Kickstarter version, so there are, some of these wooden upgrades are pretty cool. Um, I do have that, that, that rules discrepancy was annoying, and there's only these two um, player aids. One's a how to play and one's for keywords. But why, And they're not double-sided, like, why isn't there a, this say how to play and this say keywords on the other side so I could give that to my other to the other player and then I could have one I mean that's just like why I don't I don't get that but the biggest complaint I have with this game is that it's just not that unique like I could already compare it to like 10 other games right here right now you know we're talking you know magic Yu-Gi-Oh uh, even like Game of Thrones Sorcerer a epic card game you know uh Adventure Time card game you know all these things where you put out something that has you know a power and toughness type of thing that's not super you know it's not super different you know like uh eternal Chronicles of the throne i also brought up that one well that one has a deck building aspect right and uh sorcerer has dice you know so those things actually have even more to separate them and make them kind of different from magic this is pretty close to magic you know it's pr it's the least different of other like i have magic i still have magic and dice masters and stuff in my you know in boxes that i will play you know whenever somebody wants to i'll pull them out of my closet and we'll play that right this like if you already own magic which a lot of people do if you already own games similar why would you get this over that or why would you get this in addition to that you know if you've never played magic before sure this is relatively easy you should you could this will teach you magic that type of thing you know but it's just so we've just seen this type of game so much you know by now which is like if this game existed in a vacuum i would like it a lot well okay there is one mechanical thing that i do have a complaint about is because you can choose what you're going to attack i'm either going to attack the animal or i'm going to attack your stronghold there's a term called guard i think it is that is kind of like taunt in hearthstone um, where like you have to hit that before you can hit the stronghold, right? Or maybe you have to hit that before you have to hit the other animals. I can't remember that, but I definitely know you have to hit that before you can hit the stronghold. Unless, and there's times when that guard is really powerful. Like there are definitely times where I'm like, yeah, unless you draw a guard, I'm going to win next turn. Like I have three guys and you have one guy left. What are you going to do? Okay, you can attack one of my guys. You can attack my stronghold. It's not going to kill me. I'm going to get your stronghold next turn. And there's nothing you can do about it, you know? Because it's that choice, then guard is just, too strong well not too strong like it's necessary almost because there are times if i can just get more guys out faster and you know just flood the board and stuff you know sure you can swing back and kill my guys but you know if i can if i can come back and get your stronghold then what does it matter now, i'm not saying that that's going to happen every single game i'm also not saying that that's like a few and far between thing it is something that does come up and you just kind of go all right well the, the next two turns of this game are kind of playing itself unless you can draw into this one thing that you really need, which is usually going to be guard. But okay, even that aside, I mean, even given that I still enjoy the game, I still have fun playing it. And I've, I've seen every single faction play and they feel a little bit different. Um, but it's just, if this game existed in a vacuum, sure, it would be, re I don't even know if I would say it would be great. I mean, I guess my... My opinion is tainted because it does not exist in a vacuum, and that's a problem. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. I already have Magic, Dice Masters, Epic Card Game, uh, Sorcerer, uh, Game of Thrones Card Game, um, even Star Realms and Hero Realms, and, um, you know, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Netrunner. I have so many two-player dueling games okay and some of those don't have creatures in them but a lot of them do a lot of them have creatures that you play with power and toughness and you attack each other and stuff and it's like do i need another one i'm not trying to rag on this game because mechanically it is pretty decent and it isn't overall fun but i'm just saying it doesn't exist in a vacuum and if you already have other games like this like i like like i just listed in that just off the top of my head list then yeah this one doesn't really separate itself all that much i mean the the this card thing is pretty cool, but I'm pretty certain that's a mechanic in, in some sets of Magic too. Either way, if whatever I was talking about in this video sounds interesting to you, I am going to put a purchase link to this game in the description box down below. We'll also have a link for Game Toppers down below, but also there'll be a button that says subscribe, so you can subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored.